Hello Warfighters, War is Hell. Welcome to a brand new episode of Top 5 Arma 3 Mods. This particular episode though, we're going to be looking into the Top 5 Arma 3 Cold War Mods. The reason why I'm going over this is because of the most recent announcement by Bohemia Interactive about the new creator DLC called CSLA Iron Curtain. This is going to be all about an alternate version of the Cold War in the 1980s. I'm super excited about it. I love the Cold War time period. When I think you know, you get this creator DLC and you also use the previous creator DLC global mobilization. You're going to have a phenomenal Cold War experience. And this is honestly one of my favorite timelines and the biggest like what ifs, you know, if the Cold War had gone hot. So I'm just super excited. And if you're like me and you cannot wait to get into some Cold War gameplay, uh, these mods are going to be the best ones to take a look at. Before we begin, I wanted to share with you some of the parameters that I was operating within while I was selecting these mods. I think it's important to set the stage for what you're going to be seeing in this video and kind of knowing why I went the direction that I did. For example, I know that the Cold War means a lot of things to a lot of different people. For example, when you take a look at the timeline, you know, basically the end of World War II to the end of the Soviet Union, there's a lot of different mods that I could be using within that time frame that meets Cold War. I could be looking at World War II mods. I could be looking at Vietnam mods. I could be looking at modern day mods and incorporating some of that in there if I really wanted to go into some of the tail end of the Cold War uh, type of assets. But over that time period, you have just so much change in gear, vehicles, weapons. I just thought it was too vast to cover in five mods. So what I'm looking at here for this particular episode is late Cold War, basically the 1980s. This fits really well with CSLA and global mobilization. And if you're excited about that particular uh, timeline, these are the mods for you. Another thing that I wanted to point out is I did not include any mods that required you to have the previous creator DLC, Global Mobilization. Now, don't get me wrong. I love Global Mobilization, fantastic campaign, the map is awesome, the vehicles are very well done. I just love everything about it. And while I wanted to include some mods in here that use that as a dependency, I fully understand though not everybody is able to purchase a community DLC. And I want these videos where I'm taking a look at Arma 3 mods to be as accessible to everybody as possible. I thought the best thing to do was to leave those mods out. The last thing, and it kind of ties to the previous uh, thing that I just mentioned, is that I did not include mods that required a long list of other mods for you to use. Basically, I found some that are really well done, but it requires you to have all of RHS, all of Cup, all of NI Arms, and then a whole bunch of other mods. So it's basically just collecting all of these other ones and putting them together for you. Those are fantastic but I also understand not everybody wants to download all of that type of stuff. So hopefully that makes sense. Without further ado, let's get to the top five Arma 3 Cold War mods, starting with number five. Coming in at number five, we've got the mod East versus West. It seems like that this was a mod that was created for the purpose of giving everybody the basics for what they would need to be able to create and play their own Cold War scenarios. There's two factions to this mod. There's the United States and the Soviet Union. And I was really impressed to see that both sides have a pretty even balance of the number of assets that were created for them. For example, the infantry, the vehicles, there's basically the same number and the same types. So it should be pretty easy to put a good fight together using this mod. Now with infantry, they obviously have the individual classes that you can just place down. They also have a number of groups that have been pre-made, which I think is very helpful. So if you need a rifle squad in a situation, you can place that down versus a weapon squad. Uh, I really like that that was just put in there, make it easy to place. Also, when you take a look at vehicles, you have a number of different types for the scenario. You've got light vehicles like Humvees and UAVs, depending on the side. Uh, if you're the Soviets, you have access to Urals. Americans have M39s. And all of the trucks have some additional variants. So you've got the covered and uncovered transport. You've got an ammo truck for each side, refueling truck, and also a repair truck. So you can utilize those in your missions as needed. You've also got access to infantry fighting vehicles and APCs. And there is also armor with the M1A1 for the US and the T-72 for the Soviet Unions. Each side also has an attack helicopter, a transport helicopter, and a fixed wing aircraft for close air support. The Americans have the A-10 and the Soviets have the Su-25. 
Now with this mod, I should point out that the last time it was updated was November 2016, and I feel like to some degree it shows. The textures aren't necessarily the greatest in there, but if you're wanting something quick and dirty, just hop right into a Cold War style mission that can be made pretty quickly. You don't want to have to worry about getting a ton of mods. This is the mod that you're going to want to go with. Now for number four. Coming in at number four, we've got the mod Pook Soviet Air Force Pack. Now, the thing that makes this mod stand out is in the first line of its description on the Steam Workshop. It says, after literally years of work, this is finally ready for playtime. You can definitely tell that HC Pookie, the developer of this mod, invested a lot of time and a lot of love into making this mod what it is. It is fantastic. Obviously, from the name of the mod, you can tell this is just going to be for Soviet forces, so you're going to need air assets for NATO if you're wanting to try and build something as detailed as this. But this is a must-have. Like, I think I counted 41 different air assets that you can utilize in missions, ranging from helicopters like the KA-27, the KA-29, the MI-28s. You've also got a wide number of transport and other support aircraft that can be utilized you know big ones like the il-76 but it's just like man there are so many of them in here it is fantastic like with transport aircraft really not utilized too much in military scenarios but you see hc pookie invested a lot of time and there's a lot of these type of aircraft in here like this is what tells me this dude really cared about it loved it and really wanted to make something complete for the community Obviously, you've also got other assets too, like fighters, MiG-23, 25, 27, 29, 31, 35. You've got uh, bombers in here as well. I mean, it's just insane what you've got access to. If there is something that you would need for the Soviet Air Force, you have got it here in this pack. So again, if you're building a Cold War scenario, this is a must have if air assets for the Soviet Union are going to be involved in any way whatsoever i highly recommend checking this out if you're going to be playing a great cold war scenario you've got to do it on a great cold war looking map which is why here at number three we've got the mod roche germany i'm probably slaughtering that name which is why i'm going to put the link in the description below for it like i am with all the other mods and if i did slaughter the name to everyone in germany especially you night eye i apologize german is not my strong suit i literally tried to find the correct pronunciation of this particular mod and I could not find it uh, but yeah anyway so this mod has a lot of good things going for it one it is pretty substantial in size looking at being about 15 by 15 kilometers in size so yeah that's a lot of terrain for you to be able to play in of a lot of different terrain types which I will talk about in just a little bit there's more than 50 hand-placed villages, towns, and other industrial areas across the map. So you're going to get a wide variety of urban type of fighting that you can take part in. And what's great about the urban fighting is that the developers of this mod, WA Lancer and Haggerty, made sure that around 95% of the buildings are enterable. I really appreciate that a lot because rather than urban fighting just being AI running on the outside of the buildings, you can place them in just about every structure. Not only that, but I guess it goes for a defensive advantage for you as well if you decide to hunker down in a building. There's also an airfield on the map with a 1500 meter runway. That's helpful to know as you're considering probably looking at adding air assets, regardless of what size aircraft that you're looking to use and also what side you're gonna be playing as that airfield will likely come in handy and who knows that might even make a interesting mission to see what you can do with that runway so with the diverse terrain that i was telling you a little bit about earlier i should state that this is a map that is based off of real world terrain which i love those maps i've always found that real world terrain maps are far better than ones people have just handcrafted because obviously nature's going to do things a lot better than people are when it comes to trying to generate terrain in here you've got a uh, wide open farmland at some places and the terrain is pretty flat so in those wide open spaces you could have long range tank battles or long range infantry uh, engagements as well. You also have areas where the terrain is heavily wooded. And I really like the way that the developers did 
the wooded terrain because yes while there is a dense amount of trees there's not that much on the ground compared to like some other mods where you have just a ton of foliage knock down trees all of that type of stuff that gives the ai the advantage i really feel like in this mod you could throw ai into the heavily wooded area the players will still experience a challenge but it just won't be ridiculously unfair so i really like how that's going there's also some lakes and a river in here that i think makes it fantastic this is the type of mod that if you're wanting to really take a look at what it would be like in germany during the cold war th this is the one that stands out so definitely take a look at the map roche germany There's a lot of mods that are like it, but I feel like that this one is the best. Coming in at number two, we've got Soviet Armed Forces. Here's what I really like about this mod that the other ones don't, and I guess I should say what the other mods do. As I was going through and taking a look at mods that I had used previously for Cold War scenarios, and also taking a look for ones that I might not have discovered or used yet, I found a common trend. A lot of them will take RHS or Cup, reskin them, put a new config together to compile a new faction, and send it out as a mod got no problems with that whatsoever it works everybody staying within the permissions giving the correct credit where credit is due i have no problems again with that but what i like here about the soviet armed forces mod and why i think that it is one of the only mods in this category that has five stars is i just love the detail i love the fact that this was also created not just uh, as a boom here is the soviet armed forces but it was really done to represent the Soviet army between the years 79 and 89. A lot of that was spent in Afghanistan. So you've got a wide number of assets that you can utilize with this. You've got BTRs, you've got UAZs, you've got MI-24s, MI-8s, uh, BMDs, BMPs. Uh, you've got a ton of infantry of different types. Like you've got some that are wearing Gorkas, you've got VDV, you've got MPs. You've got BRDMs. I mean, there's just a ton of stuff that is in here that you would expect to find in a Soviet type of faction. But again, I think that they're really well done. Not only that, but Basher has also included some additional assets in here too that are unique to this, which is another reason why I think that this one really stands out. And I, I do have to say this about Basher. Like if you go into Basher's workshop, you can see that some of the assets that have been created for the workshop have a cold war type of theme to them so basher really cares about this stuff that tells me he's knowledgeable and putting the right stuff into the mod to accurately represent the soviet military so to show off or to give him a shout out on some of the other mods that he has he has a soviet air assault troops mod that is pretty similarly designed to what you're seeing here he's also made a cold war soviet military but again that does require um, global mobilization which is why I didn't put that one uh, in here he's also got a really cool one I love this one this was almost my honorable mention the Cold War Livonian People's Army I just thought it was really cool taking Armalor and fitting that into the Cold War like that so if you're watching this I don't know if you will mad props dude I love that uh, so if you're looking for Soviet Armed Forces that is the mod that you're going to want to use Before I get to number one, I feel like I have to give an honorable mention. This was actually going to be in the top five, but just because of me being very particular with things, I couldn't make it a top five mod because it's not a mod, it is a script, but it is Alias's nuke script. I feel like that nuclear weapons are going to have to play a factor in Cold War scenarios because nuclear weapons were so key to the strategy of both sides. I mean, both the Warsaw Pact and NATO figured that tactical nuclear weapons were going to be the way that they were going to win on the battlefield. So if you're looking to implement something like that, yes, there are some mods that are out there. There's like a suitcase nuke, which is nice that you can just plant it down on the ground, activate it, wait 120 seconds, and then it will go up. There's also mods that you can attach to aircraft uh, to drop on different positions and stuff like that. But I just feel like the Alias's nuke script is one of the best looking ones that are out there. And honestly, it's pretty easy to implement. One of the things that I like about Alias's work, in addition to looking absolutely fantastic, is Alias does provide tutorials on how to utilize the script, how to make changes to it, to make it fit what you want it to be. So I do like the fact that this is very adaptable to whatever situation that you would want. So I love Alias's work. I had to put this in here, hence why the Alias nuke script is an honorable mention. 
Now it's time for number one and the disclaimer that comes with it, which is this is obviously all my own opinion. You're likely going to have a different opinion from me. And if that's the case, that's fantastic. Go ahead and put it in the comment section, whatever mod you think should have made the cut but didn't, or if there's a, a mod that you would like to talk about that fits the Cold War, go ahead and put that in there because not only will I see it, but somebody who is new to Arma might also see it as well and start utilizing it too. So it's just a great way to help the community if you comment whatever mod that you think that I might have missed or you wanna add something else about some of the mods that I discussed. Now, number one for a lot of people I feel like is going to be insert your own country's mod here and I'm guilty of doing that. As an American, the number one mod or mods is going to be the US military mod and DHI uniforms and equipment. The reason why that there are two of them up here is because they are made by the same developer, Delta Hawk, and they serve essentially the same purpose. There are some slight differences between the two of them, which I will go over in a little bit, but basically what these mods do is they provide uniforms and some of the gear to go along with it, like vests, helmets, and backpacks, to fit the United States military in the late 80s and 90s. I think that this is the best mod when it comes to trying to, to give you that late 80s, early 90s feel, uh, which is again why I use it uh, pretty frequently for any type of Cold War scenario. I love the different type of camouflage that's in here. I mean, it's all M81, but you've got you know, also your chocolate chip in there. You've got even like the M81 urban camo, which is that black, gray, and white, which I love. Um, and then obviously M81 woodland. I mean, you've got desert too, but M81 woodland is my favorite, like all time favorite camo. And so I, I just love rolling with this. There are some slight differences though in the M81 woodland camo between the two mods. I feel like that DHI's is slightly better, but when you look at DHI and also USM, there are some variations with the type of gears that are available for you. US military mod also has groups pre-made so that way you can place them down in the editor very easily. That way you don't have to go through and just make individual people or copy and paste a loadout from one person to the next. So that is helpful. The one thing that these mods are missing is weapons and vehicles. So this is not going to be an all-in-one type of thing for the United States military. You're likely going to have to supplement these mods with cup weapons or cup vehicles or some other mod that's going to give you those uh, types of assets if you really want to have the true US military available for you in a Cold War scenario. So these mods are fantastic. I love them. Uh, you guys are seeing just some good look uh, or some of the good looks that can come from this mod. And like I said, if you're from a different country, there's likely going to be a different one for you. Like Spear Point, for example, is one that covers into or the Cold War into 85, I think it is. Uh, so you've got some of that there. Obviously, there's going to be some for some other countries as well. It's just a matter of searching through the Steam Workshop and finding that one for your country. I was going to try and look at another country's for the honorable mention, but I just am not... Uh, well versed in some of the assets for that time for other countries and i didn't want to say something stupid which is why i didn't include it but anyway so that is the list of top five arma 3 mods for the cold war i appreciate you guys stopping by and watching this i hope you are all excited for the new uh creator dlc and you're excited for some cold war gameplay because whether it's an alternate history or it's something that i just play for fun with some people i, I can't wait to do some cold war stuff here on this channel so make sure you guys come back for the next list as i'm putting that together right now i don't want to spoil necessarily what it is but i appreciate you guys watching this all the way through and being engaged with the video also big thanks to everybody at patreon for supporting me allowing me to do stuff like this you guys are fantastic so if you want to support me in the same way just check the description below you can subscribe you can join the channel uh, there's a lot of different ways obviously that you can do it but you guys are fantastic you really are thank you army community for being so awesome and for watching this war is hell you don't have to worry because war fighters i've got your six